Hey everybody, Fred Minnick here, and today I am going to taste this right here, the Heaven Hill 20-year-old corn whiskey. Now, this video is going to show a little dirty secret of mine. When Heaven Hill sent this to me, I went ahead, opened it up right there, and I didn't, I didn't wait for you all. Uh, I just cracked it open with a couple of friends. And, and I tasted it. So I've already tasted this. So this isn't the first time I've tasted it. And when I opened it, and this is a little word to you all out there with this package. When you open it, be very careful uh, because I split, the, uh, I split the label right there. Now, maybe that was just my excitement in the moment because I'm a big corn whiskey fan. But um, be careful when you do open this lovely, lovely box. Ooh. See, See that? It doesn't like open all the way it's kind of like kind of like got a trap there or something i don't know then again yeah i'm not exactly the best at opening boxes uh as you may have seen in my what's in the box in the past i've always been a really big corn whiskey fan and i've also noticed that there is a great deal of confusion for what is corn whiskey a lot of people think that corn whiskey is just bourbon uh, that can go on to use barrels, and that is not true at all. I'm actually going to put right up here over my shoulder the the definition. This is the actual federal definition of corn whiskey. Corn whiskey always has to be at least 80% corn. So this is the American, the United States of America standards. Corn whiskey is not a federally protected term like... Um, like bourbon is so you will see corn whiskey made in other countries like Mexico has some really good corn whiskey being made there you don't see a, a ton of it out there but there's just enough that you know there could be you know differences most people will follow the American standard of what is uh, corn whiskey but you can see here there is the the barrel entry proof and the off the still proof are the same. So whiskey produced at not exceeding 80% alcohol by volume, that's 160 proof. That is the same as bourbon. So that's what's what the it's it's coming off of the still. It can't be any higher than 160 proof. But the truth is most distillers are coming off the still at 130 proof. Uh, maybe 140. Very few distillers are at 160 proof. In rum, that's a completely different story. And other types of whiskey, different story. But in American styles, they tend to stay in that 160, under 160 sweet spot of like 130. You will have some like MB Roland uh, that really, t you know, tempts fate and tries to do 107, 110 proof off the still. That's very hard to accomplish, but you can pull it off. Essentially, that's very important to think about because the higher you go up in proof, the more flavor you are stripping out of the grain. So the more alcohol uh, that is there and less of the like uh, the oils and the fatty acids. And that's honestly, that's one of the big reasons why I, I loathe vodka is because it comes off the still at the same proof point, 190 as ethanol. So, so the more you go up, the more you're stripping out. So don't need to get in a vodka tangent. Don't need to get in a vodka ten tangent. Breathe breathe <laughs> and then you can see there it has to go into a barrel at no more than 125 proof that's the same as bourbon now the two differences with corn whiskey and bourbon is that the mash has to come from at least 80 percent corn so that is a large amount of corn so most most bourbon distillers are using 75% corn or less. They like to get those those flavor grains in there and have those flavor grains working for them. Flavor grains usually being like uh, rye and wheat. You're seeing other stuff get in there now. You're seeing oats get in there. You're seeing rice. Try to kale. People are playing with try to kale, but usually it's rye and uh, and wheat. And of course barley, but there is some old school thought that barley does not have a lot of flavoring agent to it. I completely disagree with that, but you know some of those uh, some of the old timers were talking like you know distillers in the 80s and early 90s who were taught by the legends of the 60s and 70s. 
were you know they had this common belief that the uh, that the barley did not actually have a big impact on the flavor. Um, anyway, it, barley the malted barley is basically used during you know for a bit. It's a big part of the fermentation. Um, anyway, so I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole here, but I, I have a feeling that if you watch my videos, if you would subscribe to this channel, thank you by the way. You know, I'm uh, I'm always trying to give you knowledge and trying to give you more information, and it's something I'm very passionate about. And sometimes I go off on these tangents about barley, so uh, so thank you for for bearing with me on that one. So that 80% corn is you know it, it has to be that. So that's tell it tells you that a distiller is knowingly and thinking about making corn whiskey uh, when they put the corn into the fermenter because they are not typically using that much corn when making bourbon. And so there are times in whiskey history where someone put too much corn in the ferment and was like, oh, shit, what do we do? We're like, oh, well, let's just make corn whiskey out of it. We'll figure it out later. And so that has happened before. It's also uh, they've also turned those things into gin and and vodkas and so forth when you have these larger distilleries. But uh, you, they intentionally tried to make corn whiskey. Now, the downside to corn whiskey is there's not a large market for it. There's not a lot of people uh, requesting it. There's really only one major product out there, and that is mellow corn. Mellow corn is a, a very fantastic pour. Um, you know, in my scoring scale, it's between a 70 and 80. You know, very, very tasty, but it's also $9, $12. And to me, like if I had to choose between that and Jack Daniels to have neat, I would be choosing Melicorn. If I am mixing, mixing it with Coca Cola, I'd be picking Jack Daniels. So Melicorn is a is a you got to be in the mood for it kind of whiskey. It really is. I, to me, that's how how it is. But I have always loved loved Melicorn. We always have a bottle at home because when I'm in the mood for it, that's all I want. And essentially, that's what we're looking at here. This is uh, this is mellow corn, twenty years old. And the other two aspects is that it can go into a uh, it, it has it can go into a used barrel, so it can they can take former bourbon barrels and use use those. They also can use a, a former rum barrel or a former Scotch barrel. You know, so there's a lot of a lot of a lot of variants here for an oak barrel that a corn whiskey producer could use. Or they could use a an uncharred, an uncharred new oak container. One of my favorite corn whiskeys on the market actually comes out of uh, Georgia. It's in like this little uh, round container. You can find you can find this in stores around 30 bucks. Um, and if, if you're twisting my arm to pick a, a, a corn whiskey that I used to buy all the time, that isn't mellow corn, it would be that 13th co colony corn whiskey out of Georgia. I, I love that stuff and I used to stock up on it, but I don't really see it in the stores much anymore. And I, I probably need to look into that a little bit more and ask what happened to it. Or maybe, uh, I'm just not shopping in the right stores. Who knows? Let's get to it. Oh, I still have the foil there. There we go. This also should be noted that this is the bottle I was going to bring to the bottle share with the New York Bourbon uh, Drinkers Club when I was in town last week. But I I grossly underestimated how far it would take, how long it would take me to go from one side of the town to the other side of the town to get to get it from my hotel room. And um, if I would have done that, I'd have been like two hours late. So my apologies to all those who came to uh, sip this bottle with me. I failed you. <laughs> but it was great hanging out nonetheless. Okay, so here we are with the Heaven Hill 20-year-old corn whiskey. Uh, kind of got some nice alcohol-forward notes. Like, well, I, I shouldn't say... There's some sweetness, and then there's some alcohol. Um, it feels very alcohol-forward on the nose, like it kind of tingles a little bit. And then there's like some sweetness, uh, and there's 
corn, like grilled corn out on the charcoaler. Mm. Hot damn. I should have I should have told you what this cost. Uh, the SRP on this I think is two hundred ninety dollars. It's two eighty nine or two ninety. It is uh, one hundred and fifteen proof. One hundred and fifteen proof. The mash bill on here is eighty percent corn, eight percent rye, twelve percent malted barley. There was one hundred ten barrels of this, uh, so these would have been used bourbon barrels that um, were in warehouse K. 1K, Rick House 1K, third floor. And yeah, this is uh, now, now I'm kind of go back, going back in. And it's kind of a estuary, kind of estuary, like we would say, like we would say, like rum is, like can be when you smell alcohol and you kind of like get in there a little bit deeper. You know, it's more estery, if you will. And there's some, some fruit around it. Tasty. I really love the way it feels on my tongue. It feels... Um, it doesn't feel like 115 proof. It feels very velvety. It feels, it feels rich, and I will tell you that I like this a lot more today than when I first tasted it. And uh, that there's a any number of reasons why that could be, but that's why I always taste three times, try to taste three times before rendering an opinion on a whiskey. And this would be the third time. So this would be my favorite tasting so far. But it feels, you know, and again, remember I said at the top, corn whiskey is a mood whiskey, you know. And so I'm very much in the mood for it right now. Very fruity on the palate, very sweet. Uh, but like that grilled corn coming, like smoked grilled corn on the on the charcoaler or the grill, whatever you want to call it. It's just got a little bit of smoke to it. And uh, a big old like big old hunk of corn, which obviously it is corn whiskey. There's a lot of corn there, but if you ever wondered if corn is a neutral grain when it comes to uh, whiskey, like whether you can taste it, I think this bottle tells you that story. This bottle tells you indeed that this is corn whiskey. It's coming out of the barrel. It's got that corn note. So if you are if you like grains, if you love the flavor of grains, if you like the flavor of corn with some sweetness. You'll love this, but if you're someone who's just stuck on that caramel note, that caramel note that you get in bourbon, that's uh, really, you know, it, it's the quintessential note in, in a lot of bourbons, you may not like this. And so I would say save your money, but uh, this is a, a fantastic pour, one that when I was going into this tasting, I did not think I would like it as much as I do now. I will tell you that this could be this could be the best corn whiskey that's say corn whiskey by itself that's been put on the market. But I can't get over like this kind of how the nose and the palate are so different. Like it's got when I'm going back in, that third note, that estuary kind of it it does really smell. It has like a lot of like rum centric approach on the nose. Mm. finish long and strong long and strong so there you have it quite the tasty pour and uh this is one that i might hide from my wife because i know her flavor pro profile she'll devour this she will devour that for sure but that's going to do it for uh this little tasting video thank you for tuning in if you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Cheers. And remember, fucking sucks. <laughs>